nothing in life is ever as we expect it to be. Not our happiest moments, not our saddest moments. They never look like what we thought they would be. So when people ask me about Montana and I tell them, no, it's not what I expected it to be, it's not that it was bad or it didn't live up to my expectations. It's just that our expectations are always so wrong. Hey you, yes you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. A podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz. And every week, I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people, just like you, who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. I am back from Montana. If you remember last week's episode, I hinted that I was going somewhere that I have wanted to travel to my entire life. I didn't tell you where I was going in the episode because I'm a bit superstitious with traveling. I've wanted to go to Montana forever, and I'm not even lying or kidding or joking. The last five times I've planned a trip to Montana in my life, I've had to cancel them for all different reasons, most recently because of different COVID outbreaks. So for this trip, I didn't want to tell anybody, nobody where I was going until I landed in Montana. We went to Montana on Friday. We got back today and we really did see a lot of the state. I think one of the things you might not realize about Montana is that not only is it a relatively large state, but everything is so spread out. In the course of just a couple of days, we drove over a thousand miles and we didn't even see probably half of the state when we were there. We landed in Missoula, which is like a really cute hippie town. It's a college town. They have some really good shopping, great pizza. The best pizza I had was in Missoula. After that, we drove to a town called Butte, Montana, which not many people know about. It's a very old mining town. It was once the richest town in Montana, but now it's just a very small town. And then after that, we drove to Yellowstone and we spent a day at Yellowstone exploring the park. One thing I didn't know about Yellowstone is that you do not get phone service when you are there. There's no phone service. They didn't have any Wi-Fi. So for an entire day, I didn't have a working phone, which was very alarming to my parents who didn't know that in advance and was a little scary for me. But I do think the best way to enjoy Yellowstone, a famous national park, is without being able to use your phone. We took some amazing pictures. We saw some incredible things in Yellowstone. After that, we went to Bozeman, Montana, which is becoming what they call LA of Montana, a hip city where a lot of people from California and New York and all these different places are moving. They have a great downtown with a lot of shopping. They have a really fun hike and so much more. When I got back from Montana, everybody I knew started to ask me if Montana was what I expected it to be. And the truth is, and if you get to know me and you meet me in person, I cannot lie to you. I am a straight shooter. I tell it like it is. I don't have a filter. So when people ask me if I thought Montana was as I expected, my quick, simple answer was no, it wasn't. And I don't mean that in a bad way or a sad way. It's just that nothing in life is ever as we expect it to be. Our happiest moments are sometimes not what we ever thought they would look like, and our saddest moments are also not what we thought they would look like either. Which is to say, I don't know what I was expecting when I went to Montana, but what I ended up feeling when I was there was not what I expected to feel. I guess I went there thinking that Montana would be my forever home, would be a place that answered all my problems, that I'd find something so magical there. And what I did find was a rare type of beauty, a different way of accessing parts of my soul. I saw a place that was very different looking than what I imagined it to be. I guess I imagined these huge mountains everywhere, but what I saw was a lot of flat land and animals, and that was really cool too. 
I guess I went to Montana searching for something. And what I found was the truth that what you're looking for will never be where you're looking for it. It might be somewhere different or you may have already found it somewhere else. So when people ask me if Montana is what I expected it to be, no, it's not. It's not better or worse. It's just different. And it's a place I hope to go back to someday. And it was a place that was not underwhelming. But I guess when you want to go somewhere so bad, when you want to do something so badly, and you finally go and do it, it will never, ever, ever, ever be what you expected. Now that I'm back in Brooklyn, I am on a work overload. And what I mean by that is never in the past, I don't know, four years, have I taken a six day vacation, okay? Never. And to prepare for this vacation, since I don't have vacation days as an entrepreneur, I had to work double time for a good two weeks leading up to the trip just to make sure that everything that had to be done was done. All my newsletters were scheduled, my podcast was scheduled, I do a lot of like content for brands, all of that was filmed. I had to make sure that all my work was done so that I can take those six days off. And during my six days, I did very little work. I barely turned on my computer. I hardly checked my email. But now that I'm back, I am playing an extreme game of catch up. And as I look at the schedule, as I look at the calendar, all I can think about is we don't have much time left of 2020. And if you don't do something about that now, before you know it, it'll be January. Somebody I know, Christina, she told me about this thing that she does that I promised myself this month would be the month that I do too. What she does every single month on the date of her birthday, so if she's born on the 6th of the month, she blocks that day off as a day to do something special for herself. Why do we celebrate ourselves just one time a year? Why can't we do something nice for ourselves once a month? This doesn't have to be grand and luxurious. We don't have to take a whole spa day. But if we put on our calendar that that day is our day, we can plan something nice. So I went ahead and I blocked off the first of the month on my calendar because I'm born April Fool's Day, April 1st, as Gen Day. And what I'm going to do is four days before Gen Day, I also mark this on my calendar, I'm going to plan something to do that day. Sometimes Gen Day falls on a Saturday, which is great, but sometimes it falls on a Wednesday, which doesn't give me a lot of time to really spend the day doing something fun. But it does mean that that day, maybe I decide to go work at a coffee shop in Manhattan and go walk around, something very different than what I do every other day. Maybe it's a day I take myself to a Broadway show. Maybe it's a day I take myself to my favorite restaurant. So think about this way. Look at your calendar and block off important moments now before the year ends. So in addition to Gen Day, I also want to do an anniversary day every single month. I and I met on the 19th of March. We got married on the 19th of March many years later. So I also blocked off the 19th of every month as a time to celebrate our anniversary. Sometimes maybe we'll go out to dinner. Maybe sometimes we'll cook a nice dinner here. Maybe sometimes we'll do something fun on that day. But many months go by before we realize that the 19th is the day that we met. So that's one thing I did to my calendar to just maximize my time before the end of the year is create a gen day to celebrate my birthday once a month on the date of the birthday and to also celebrate my anniversary once a month as well. Now, the other thing that I wanted to do is fall, winter, there's so many things going on. There's so much that you want to see and you want to do. And before you know it, the time goes by and you don't do anything. It's one thing to make a to-do list of those things, but then you actually have to plan to do those things. So while I was on the plane, what I did was I wrote down three things for September, three for October, three for November, and three for December that I love doing in those months. These are things I look forward to all year round. Like in December, I love going ice skating. In September, I love going apple picking. In October, there's a really fun, spooky Halloween town I like visiting. And if I don't plan that now... I just know it will never happen because with travel, with work, with all of these things, these dates just pass us by. So I wrote down 
the three things per month that I just love to do. And then I actually put them on the calendar and I sent Adam a calendar invite to do these things with me so that they're on his calendar. That way, when we wake up on a Saturday and we're like, what should we do today? And we end up doing the same old thing. Now on the calendar, it says, okay, this day is blocked off for apple picking at our favorite apple picking spot. And then a couple days in October are blocked off for October activities. Before you know it, it will be January. Use this podcast as a way to look at your calendar, to look at the next three and a half months and put things down that you want to do now. If you want to cook all your friends dinner in November for a, a friend's giving, put it on the calendar right now. Send out invitations right now. If in October you want to do a solo getaway for a weekend, put it on the calendar right now. Before you know it, time will pass you by. It will be January 2023 and you'll wish that you did the things that you did during the final months of the year. I'll be back next week with a brand new podcast, my friends. All my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.